Okay, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Pencils in hand. Let's go. Hey, everybody. My name's Michael Markowski, and I'm going to be working with you and teaching you a little bit of what I know specifically about how to draw today. And if uh, you're just joining me, you've never seen my face before, well, hello, how's it going? Um, I, uh, this is now episode 10 of 10 of our beginner's drawing class, the basic skills course. And so today is sort of the end of a ch big chapter. And next week, next Tuesday, we're going to kind of start the part two. And that's kind of a little bit more um, advanced, although technically you don't necessarily need to have done anything we've done so far in order to do it. But you'll find that if you continue and you, you're uh, there with me on next Tuesday, that everything is obviously much easier because of everything that we've learned so far. So, um, let me see. I guess I just wanted to say first off how uh, grateful I am for all the support that people have shown over the past uh, month and a half that we've been together. You know, there's been you know hundreds of people that have been drawing along, leaving comments, and uh, I appreciate all the likes and subscribes that have uh, you know my numbers have been going up, and I also sincerely appreciate all of the donations that people have given me through PayPal. And if you're interested in, in helping to support the the class as well, there's links in the description below. And I've had a few people donate $100, $50, and then a few just $5, $10. And, you know, all of which is super helpful because I'm taking all of that cash and I'm putting it into redeveloping the studio here and making it uh, so we don't have this kind of boring gray background. Maybe towards the end, I'll give you a little sneak peek as to the uh, construction slash destruction that's going on all around me. There's a, um, a massive amount of uh, just tools, and I just took a, a, a reactant pill because there's a lot of sawdust in the air. Anyway, uh, you're probably way more interested in um, drawing than listening to me talk. So let's get right to it. What I want to do is I want to do a drawing of some cups and bowls. And I am, and you know what? Since I've been, I like, just jumped out of the shower, I haven't had quite as much of a chance to prep for this um, for today. Although I've taught this session many times. I am going to, let's bring up this and we'll kind of, I'll, um, I'm going to show you hear how I would make some decisions as to what to draw. So the artist that, um, uh, let me see, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here. Does that fit in there nicely? So the artist that I wanna talk about and use as inspiration is this guy, Giorgio Morandi. And Morandi was an Italian artist uh, born July 20th, 1890 to June 18th, 1964. And, you know, here's just some information about him. But he is, what's so interesting about him is he lived during that whole um, high modernist period. You know, he's a contemporary of Picasso and Matisse and Frida Kahlo and all those kind of, kind of uh, masters of uh, modernist art and painting. And... Um, unlike all of those other characters who were doing all sorts of wild things, he devoted his life primarily to painting still lifes. And I just thought it'd be kind of interesting for to look at this quick photograph. This is a photo of inside of his studio. And um, you could see, and as you're going to see shortly, he had all of these sort of uh, vases and cups and bowls and dead flowers. Uh, he had dozens and dozens of these things kind of stacked up all over the place. And he used those to make his artwork. And so he spent his entire life painting paintings that look 
like what you see on your screen right now. Like very, some might say very simple, very traditional. Like um, the still life is is one of the earliest forms of painting. Um, but uh, even despite this really really narrow limitation. Um, he carved a very successful career for himself. These paintings, as humble as they appear, sell for million, tens of millions of dollars now. Um, and he was also probably, you know, you'd say like kind of an artist's artist. Like he was, you know, appreciated probably by artists more than the general public. But uh, sort of this pure art, like just really doing something very specific. And I think it's just, it's, it's helpful for for me even just to, to remind myself let alone you guys watching how kind of simple art can be i think most of the time people way overcomplicate things and they spend a lot of time procrastinating trying to find interesting things to draw and they also want to spend just like me renovating the studio to make it really pretty and you saw that earlier image it, it, in his looked a lot like kind of what my studio looks like right now a disaster right you know nothing particularly special and he created all of these paintings which i think are, are absolutely beautiful and um so we're gonna choose one of these as a quick warm-up so i'm just scanning through here trying to find something that is relatively simple for us to draw um uh, what would be, how about, um, this is, I like this, but that's maybe, is that too simple for us? Hmm. It's a good question. Once you find it, then you're like, oh, well, maybe it needs to be more complicated. <laughs> um, um, so what would be... Okay, I think this one is going to work. So, oops, where, let's, okay, so I'm going to blow this one up, come on, okay. So, the and also the reason, just so you know, of why I just chose this image over the other ones is that, like I said, it's relatively simple and straightforward. Um, but uh, I didn't want something with too much complexity of, of different kinds of shapes, especially as a warm-up drawing. Uh, because that, if, if you start out really, really complicated, and then you're not successful, or you don't feel you're successful there, then it kind of starts you off on the bad foot, right? So we want something that we can accomplish with relative ease. So we're gonna start with this one here. So you've got your sketchbook. Where's, um, nom, 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 nom. let's go, and I'm gonna bring this down here. Okay. So, oh, let's, if you're like me, you've probably only got a, about five or six pages left in your sketchbook after today's um, session. So maybe you want to get another one over the course of the week. And now that things are kind of loosening up in terms of restrictions, you might be able to go to an art supply store. And because maybe you've just been drawing on photocopies. Okay, so if I want to draw this picture here, Let's say the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little frame for myself. Because this painting is a square painting. So I'm gonna draw a little square on the page. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's, um, but that's pretty good. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I want to, I'm gonna put the line down on the bottom if, as to where the horizon line is. Right, so that my horizon line, well actually, even before that, what I could very lightly do is just divide this into quarters, right? So 
um, a vertical and horizontal line. Can you see? Yeah, you can kind of see that, right? So I've just drawn it relatively light. I, if I was you, I would draw it even lighter or more lightly. Um, but that just now it also kind of helps us find where things are, right? So this, the horizon line or the table would be somewhere in down here. And if we think about that vase, right, that vase, you know, is almost kind of slopes a little bit out, but it's pretty meets on that line, right? And it kind of also hugs the bottom, you know, of the table here, or the, the top of the table, or however, the, the, the far edge of the table. Okay. So now I've kind of got this kind of the taper towards the spout of this, um, what would you say this is like a milk jug or, or water jug or some kind of jug. Okay. So I've got that. Now let's put the handle in, in here. So you can see also I'm drawing this whole vase as if these uh, cans or, um, you know, I don't know what those salt shakers or whatever they are that he's drawn in front of us. But I've, I want to draw the whole thing because I want to make sure that it, it works, right? That there's not some kind of oddity happening. So I always draw right through objects. And then afterwards, I'm going to go and kind of uh, clean it up. So let's say we've got... No, or I guess the other thing I would do maybe is we see kind of that this line of the shading and that kind of goes right down the middle so that actually helps me with my other cups or these what do we want to call these salt shakers or all right so I'm gonna all right so I'm practicing my cylinders So these um, kind of um, oval shapes on the top of the cylinders are going to be slightly more narrow. So maybe I'll even just draw these so you can kind of see. So again, if we think about the perspective lessons that we learned, um, I don't know, what was it, two weeks ago? That if we think about this as like, you know, um, as a box, right, then this would be the top. And then if they're all kind of receding towards some kind of a point, right, then uh, let me see. So if if I was drawing this box in uh, perspective, right, you see how the top is kind of narrow. We, we barely see the top, whereas the bottom, let's say this is a glass box, we see more of it. And if I wanted to turn this into a cylinder, what I could do, maybe I'll just use a different color, just so it's a little bit more obvious. Um, if I wanted to turn this into a cylinder, right, I would, it's like, you can imagine if I had a square, right, and I just drew the circle inside the square, if I was looking on the top, so here's my, the top of my cylinder, and then there's a bit more of a precise way of, of doing this, but, uh, I don't think it's important for us at this stage to to learn all of that. So, do you see how I'm, I, this is a more exaggerated version of this? But that if this is the top of the cylinder, we would see just a bit of it. Versus the bottom, we'd see much more of it. Or at least, uh, if it was glass, we would see the this side. But we we still see this as being much more rounded. So if I, again, if I was just to take this 
and draw this over again. Does that make sense? Okay, so I've got uh, my shapes in here. And then how about, let's just say, I'm gonna set a quick timer here and um, just to finish off this drawing, I'm gonna put a five minute timer here. So, um, I'm gonna go over top of these shapes now. And you don't have to use colored pencils, but why not? If you have them, um, so okay, and again, you can see, even though this the the original Morandi painting sort of looks very gray, if I was to if. Um, make this painting. I would probably start out with a little bit more brighter colors and then slowly kind of um, tone it down with, with some grays and, and uh, um, browns and earthy tones. Really, that's his palette was very, very earthy. So. Got uh, just under three minutes remaining. Now, you, you may not want to, to outline as darkly as I am, um, but this is just sort of a little bit of kind of my own personal style in there, I guess, as I kind of, um, and also because I'm drawing a comic book, uh, I'd kind of tend to have a little bit of uh, out darker outlines in my drawings. Um, but you could see, like, for instance, the way that he's painted this, this particular part of uh, this um, container, that those, the, the background and this container almost blur together in his picture, whereas right now I've drawn a darker line. So if I was to really try to reproduce this faithfully, I would have had a lot more subtlety in there. You know, even though I don't usually use an eraser just for this drawing, I'm going to just kind of, um, you could see, I just want to show you if, because I, I know a lot of people, especially in your beginning, you, you kind of, you often use an, an eraser, you feel you want one all the time. So I'll just show you if I was you, this is the, this is the stage where I would do a little bit of erasing. Okay, how much time? I got two minutes left on the clock. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly shade this in using the side of my pencil. Um, I don't have enough time to make some distinctions between these cups. I'm just going to kind of do them a, a little bit of the same color. And you can see I'm also, as I'm going around here, I'm just doing a little bit of an arc to try to capture a little bit of those shapes. At a minute and a half. Let's say I'm going to put some of this color on. The, you can also see that I'm, I'm not particularly concerned in my own drawing with um, fidelity to this original image, right? I'm, I'm already kind of using different colors and what other weird color could I drop in here? I'm just gonna put some yellow, maybe that's too, what about this little dark blue? Um, now 
just going to kind of add a little bit of this back into here. How much time have I got? 13 seconds. <laughs> okay, well, it's a warm up drawing, and I'm. Um, The other thing too is you see I'm going back over top of these lines here. Um, and as I go, it's like another layer of paint. So this earlier one is gonna be a little bit darker here. Okay, I think for a warm-up drawing, I'm I'm pretty happy with this. What I gotta get a little shadow in here. Or a couple shadows. We got this. This one. I'm even gonna put a little bit of this color into that shadow. You see how now even just that little thing kind of made a big difference. A little bit of that color in the shadow really kind of makes it look a little bit more believable. Um, okay, see how, I, I just, I love drawing, <laughs> that's hard for me to stop, okay, okay, I'm just gonna stop, I'm just gonna stop, okay, so, um, that, that's a good little quick warm-up drawing of, uh, Giorgio Morandi, and so, now, let me see, what I want to do is, what I want to do now is I want to show you guys how to build something. Now, where's my... Does this sit here? Okay. So, for, for the next little exercise, what we're going to need is we're going to make a viewfinder for ourselves. And... There's many, many different ways to do this. And actually, why don't I just bring uh, this up on the screen here. So on the screen, you have, here's a few different, um, this is part of the handout that I make. And you can see on the top, there is, uh, this is just a like a, a frame. You know, you could take an old picture frame or the mat from a frame, and you could take it out and use it as a viewfinder. Here's another one, and I made these for class, but I don't, everything's in dis uh, disorder right now. I won't be able to find it, but it's basically the same thing, but taping a little string um, right through the middle, right? To, so that you can use like what we did to begin our drawing with a little um, uh, dividing it into quarters to help you translate what you see onto the page. Here's another one, and often we make this one here of basically two L-shaped pieces of paper. The benefit of this is that you know, it's held together by paper clips or little bits of tape, is that you can kind of expand it and then also change the shape of your viewfinder. And then here's something similar. I think we might make something like, I think, you know what, I'm gonna make a few of them while you maybe make one of them and then you decide which one to do. So you don't, all you need is a piece of paper. So I'm gonna show you the, the kind of quick and dirty way of doing this without anything. And I'm gonna even just use a page of from my sketchbook. And I was, you know, my mind thinking, should I use the drawing I just did? Uh, okay, so here's a page in my sketchbook. And I am going to, let's say, I'm gonna fold it in half. Okay, and you can see um, the way that I fold and tear paper is I fold it a few times like this, 
If you have scissors, you can use scissors. But I, one of the reasons why I'm showing you how to do this without any tools whatsoever, because I'm, I'm sure some people are like, how come you didn't tell us we needed scissors and all this other stuff, is I want you to be able to do this without needing really anything. Um, because the more tools that are required, the more people will use it as an excuse to procrastinate. So the more you fold the paper, the easier it is to tear because you're uh, kind of breaking the, the fibers down. I love the look of torn paper. And for my drawings, whenever I get paper, I will tear the edges, the, the sides of the papers off to give it this this kind of soft um, look, it kind of simulates the look of handmade paper. So, um, which I I also really really like. Um, so, and as you see, as I'm folding it here, I'm just I don't I I really don't have fingernails, very long fingernails. So, but I'm just using those fingernails to kind of go over these edges. You could use other kinds of tools. The the one that you you could find in art supply store is called a a bone folder, like a shin bone or or finger bone or whatever bone. Um, and it's just they're now usually made of plastic, but originally they were bone. Um, and as long as it's really nice and clean, you could you could use a fork, you could use a spoon, you could use. All sorts of different kinds of things. If you use a pencil, though, you might, like the side of your pencil, you may find like the yellow or blue or whatever color comes off. So this one, this is the, the one I was showing you. Um, I actually didn't really talk about this one yet. This is making a little um, uh, V shape here. So I'm just folding the edge. Here, I'll do this one again. If I start like this and I bend, there's this. Okay. So you see I've got, and again, I'm, this I'm not going to tear. I'm going to keep it like this. Just going to give it a nice little fold. And then you see now I've got a little viewfinder that I can take. And with this one, I am just going to add a, take a couple little pieces of tape. You could use paper clips. Um, and what I, I personally like a, a little bit of a rectangular image. You could, if you want to make a square, you could see um, what is something relative, like here's the size of an iPhone, right? So if you see, here's a, a phone, how big of an image I'm going to make. Mine is going to be a little bit less than the screen size. And you can see mine is not perfect. And <laughs> If you've learned anything so far, I am not uh, someone who really cares about perfection. Um, this is just white archival tape that I have just in my studio, but you could use scotch tape or duct tape. It doesn't really matter. You could use white paper or green paper or purple paper, whatever kind of paper. Um, what I like about the sketchbook paper is it's a has a little bit it's thicker, so it's a bit stiffer. Uh, if I've done this with photocopy paper, and photocopy paper tends to just kind of, you know, it doesn't hold its shape as well. So I like that. I'm just going to can I make one out of this? I think I can. I think I can. So I'm just so I can show you how we can do this. If we didn't even have any tape whatsoever, and you're sitting, I don't know, in the back of a a bus going across the country and and you don't have scissors you don't have anything so you're like okay i want to make a viewfinder how can i do it well this is going to be a mini viewfinder i'm just going to tear that paper off and then i'm going to fold this again so you see now i've got this a little v shape and i'm going to where are all my pencils? My pencils are all with... <laughs> I just took them outside for cut wood. I'm just going to visualize how big my... Um, and what kind of shape of a 
rectangle is. So I'm just drawing this over top because often I make the mistake of, of just cutting it and I'm not kind of happy with the cut. All right, so here, I think if mine kind of shows up like that, that would be okay. So let me see. <laughs> this is my way of, of doing it, right? So I just fo fold on those edges, right? And I'm gonna fold back the other way. This would take, this would go much faster if I used a pair of scissors, but no excuses, right? No excuses to not do it. As And you're probably even wondering, why are we even making a viewfinder to begin with? Right, like this is a drawing class and here we are folding origami, right? Well, you'll see shortly how useful a viewfinder is. Okay, so you look at that. It's kind of, I'm, I'm going a little bit faster here, so I'm getting a little bit sloppy, but uh, you could see if you were on that bus in the middle of the prairies, you could uh, take your sweet time and um, fold this until you get nice, perfect folds. Um, okay, so. Okay, so there we go. Here's another one. Here's a nice, and you can see I'm also, I want these viewfinders to be relatively small. So you can see they're, oh, I guess, look at that, almost the exact same size. Look at that, pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way. So I've got a a small, this one, you can see, is a little bit flimsier. It's also because I folded it in those places, kind of weakens it, versus this one's still got a little bit more structure. So whatever one you want. I've also got a few other ones I've made in the past. So this one here that you see on the screen, this is this is just a piece of cardboard. You know, I, I, I uh, much to my wife's displeasure, I often hoard cardboard <laughs> for this very reason, to, to make things with it. So, you know, we get a package in the mail and then I'll cut up the box. So this is just your regular corrugated cardboard and I cut a, a shape out. You can see it's a little bit bigger of a, a viewfinder. And then here's another one that I cut out and this is actually the same material that is on you know the back of a sketchbook because sometimes I'll take I'll, I tear out all the paper out of a sketchbook to make drawings individual drawings that I can sell and so I just take this and then I you know cut off the where the ring is and um, and then turn that into a viewfinder and then you've got a little extra square here for I don't know what you could use that for. Um, maybe you could cut another little viewfinder, like a mini one, and keep it in your wallet or something. Okay, so we've got these different viewfinders. I'm just going to use this one um, just because uh, I've, uh, we just made it together. So it's it's very special. It's very special to me. So um, let's go to a blank page in our sketchbook. And um, I'm going to use this one here. So um, what I want you to do is in your sketchbook, I'm going to get my paid sketchbook kind of in the middle so you can see what I'm doing here. I am going to trace, let's say, three um, rectangles. See, I'm, I'm tracing the inside of my... Um, viewfinder. Oh, and I didn't do a very good job of that because uh, I, I, what I should have said is once you've got this done before you move it, just kind of, I'm not sure why I couldn't see. Anyway, that's probably good enough. If I want, I can go back here and clean that up, but it's, uh, it's not important. These are, we're still kind of in a bit of a warm up phase too, so don't worry about um, making your rectangles perfect. So I'm going to do three of these. 
depending on the size of your paper, if you want, you could fit more of them in there. Um, there we go. So we got three um, image. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to get another version out here. Okay, that's what works. Um, okay, so now I'm going to drop this version down here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I've got my sketchbook. Actually, I'm going to flip this here because I am uh, right-handed. So I'm going to move this here and then here. Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to find something very simple that is within view. Maybe it's something in your pockets. I don't really have anything in my pockets, so I am going to take just one of my pencils here. And I'm also going to just, so I have this leftover piece of paper. I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna put my pencil like that. And then I'm gonna put my viewfinder over top of it. I'm just gonna move this down. So you see what I'm up to, all right? So this is, this is my first composition for today, and I am going to set a five minute timer for myself. And starting right now, I am going to reproduce this image into this box up here. Okay, so five minutes. So yours is going to be maybe a little bit different than mine, or you're welcome to draw what you see on the screen. Um, and so I'm going to try to draw this pencil as faithfully as I can in this box. All right. So I am... I'm drawing from life now. All right. This is the thing that... Most people say they want to be able to do when they take a drawing class. And so now I'm using the viewfinder to kind of simplify the, 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 the whole range of things around me, right? So it's, it's working like a camera. It's isolating this object from everything else. So the next thing I'm gonna, so I've got my sketch of, of the pencil on the, in my frame up here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squint my eyes. So I'm gonna pretend like I'm sleeping and I'm gonna look at the image. And if you, if it's easier for you to kind of look straight down at it, you can do that. But my head would be in the way for anybody watching, so I'm not gonna do that. But if I squint at it, it now tells me like a contrast between light and dark. So I do that and I can see, well, the lead here is going to be darker. And then this pencil is also darker. It's darker anyway than the wood, right? Because it's been painted. And if I look at it, I see, and it's also darker than the shadow. So let's, I'm gonna draw this shadow in here. And you can see like the way that I'm holding the pencil, it is just, it might as well be just resting on the paper. I'm really barely putting any pressure on it. And that allows me to kind of build up kind of uh, a nice little, I can very carefully go darker and darker and darker. Um, and then how are we doing for time? We got two and a half minutes. So we're halfway through this drawing. So I'm looking at it and it's a little bit darker over here. Right, not quite as dark on the top, but it is dark. And then there's a little bit of a highlight that I see in here. So I'm trying to account for a little bit of that. And you know, I also see just a very faint shadow on this side. 
Um, and then, you know, since I'm doing pretty good with time, I got uh, just under two minutes. What I could do is even create like a little bit of, they call like the trompe l'oeil, the optical illusion of um, trompe l'oeil, you know, is to, is to trick the eye. So I'm going to actually draw the shadow uh, that the viewfinder is casting onto the paper below. So that's going to help make this look even more like some kind of little, um, like this is a window into another world. So I'm looking at this and I think, you know what, I'm going to make this a little bit darker. That's looking pretty good. How much time do I got? I got nine seconds. Look at that. Perfect. So we've got this image reproduced in there. Perfect. Okay. So let's do this again. Let's find something else besides a pencil. If, if that's all you have, then try using drawing two pencils. What is something else in my studio nearby that I could use. Um, well, let's, I, there's, you could use a pencil sharpener. I'm actually going to use a, um, I'm going to put my phone in here and let's see thinking of a creative way. So here's, let's do, I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes. I'm gonna put this in here. And I'm gonna try drawing what I see now. All right, so let's start this again. It's gonna move all of this down so it looks better on the screen. Okay. So, you know, maybe what I'll do is, is kind of start with more of just a rectangular shape. So I draw this kind of a box, and then I'm going to round these edges a bit. And the screen has gone dark, that's okay. I don't need to draw everything that was on the screen anyway. This will, There's plenty to keep me busy here. So again, what we're doing here, we're drawing from life. We're doing the, the, um, the real thing here. This is, you know, the, what people want to be able to know how to do. And by limiting things with the viewfinder, it helps us kind of get rid of all of the overwhelming detail that is in the world that surrounds us all the time. It allows us to focus purely on this kind of, uh, these simple little details here. So, you know, you, if, uh, what, if I was, if you didn't have a phone or a pencil to draw, you could use the keys in your pocket. And now if you were to do that, maybe just one key, not the whole keychain, because then you got a lot of detail to do. But uh, you can see here, I'm just using like a phone and a pencil so far. I'm not, I don't need a lot of things here.
How am I doing for time? I got two and a half minutes. Okay, and this one was a little bit darker. So you can see I'm kind of building up some shadow. Right, I kind of start kind of soft and trying to get into the into the ballpark. And you can see even here, like I didn't erase these corners because I figured, you know what, I'm probably gonna be shading them anyway, so I just Keep on drawing. And then there's kind of an, a second shadow in here. So we got all these kind of weird shadows and in kind of strange lighting situations that happen. And being being an artist is really about being very observant about all these things and noticing, you know, such that kind of thing, like this light that is overlapping and then kind of this just seems to dissipate a little bit. Okay, and so all of this means that, how am I doing for time, I got 30 seconds, that this screen needs to be much darker. So there's, there's that. Okay. And so you can see these little shadows in there just to give that effect that it almost feels like I could stick my finger underneath here and I would be able to touch where that pencil is. But it doesn't make any sense because we would imagine seeing the phone up here. So I, anyway, this is I find this kind of very exciting to do. <laughs> Okay, so now let's take this to the next step here. Um, what do I want to do? Okay, so let's just switch this. I want you to now take your viewfinder and then kind of hold it up in front of you. And, you know, you can, if I hold it at arm's length, so I'm, right now I'm pointing it at the camera, right? You can see my eyes. Right? It's like I've zoomed in on something, right? I see just the camera and not much else. As I bring it closer to me though, now I am sort of expanding my field of view. And now I see much more than the camera. Now, what's kind of, it looks like the opposite on, on the screen. Um, now it looks like you'd see very less and less of my face, I guess. But if I was to, for me, what I see is is when I hold my hand out here, I see kind of just the camera. Now I see a whole bunch of stuff, right? So what I want you to do is just look through your viewfinder at the kind of the world around you, right? I mean, it kind of feels a little bit silly holding this piece of paper up and you're kind of looking around. This is a great way to help find compositions and find pictures. You can imagine yourself instead with your phone kind of looking around, right, and looking for a picture to take, right? Now we're just doing, this is the analog pre-camera version of this. This is what an artist would use to look and find something to draw. So what I usually get people to do is to... Um, 
we're kind of running short on time, so I'm not going to do the full... Uh, there, we'd actually do another three sketches. So what I would normally ask people to do would be to kind of look at something closer to them on their desk, let's say like a cup or a glass, and kind of holding the viewfinder about that far. Um, and then what we would do is we would I would get you to draw your foot. I know it sounds kind of... Your foot or your shoe. So... Um, which is not, it's, that would be a little bit tricky for me to do with you here, um, because you can't see my feet and I'd have to contort myself into some odd position. But, you know, if you're sitting at a table, it's not too hard for you to kind of take your, you have your, turn your sketchbook and then kind of look down at your foot, whether it's crossed on your, your other leg or, um, it's underneath a coffee table, etc. And just to try to draw a picture of maybe the tip of your shoe, your toe, your flip-flop, sandal, sock, whatever, right? So th that is, is one thing you can do, right? You could also draw part of your hand. You could draw all, if I hold this up, I can draw my whole hand, right? If I go much closer, then I just see a part of my fingers, right? Maybe I can show a little bit of that here, right? So if I was to draw part of my hand, right, and my, then I'd, this is like I've zoomed in on my hand versus when I kind of go up, I'm seeing more and more of my hand until I can see the whole hand, right? So what do you, so essentially you're going to use your viewfinder to draw something around you, looking for something very simple. Now, just for our purpose here, what I'm going to, uh, I, um, how can I do this so that it makes some sense for people who maybe don't have this? Okay, um, is this, maybe that's too complicated. So I'm just gonna take this little character this is a little toy for finger toy for our daughter. And I'm going to try to do this consistently, but I have a feeling <laughs> my hand this is uh, a hand eye coordination problem here. So I'm going to try to quickly draw what I see on the screen. All right, so. Um, and I've already started, so let me see, let's start a five minute timer. <laughs> People who are trying to draw this are like, ah, hold it steady, you're driving me nuts. Um, okay. So you don't, what I'm doing here is I'm just getting the, the basic kind of shape and the composition organized. Like once I've got this in place, I could put the viewfinder in. I'm going to hold it up for a little bit more for if there's anybody who's drawing along with me right now with this. I'm going to keep it up. But at this point, I can actually now just, I could put it down and just sort of look at the, the object itself because I don't need it at this point anymore, right? Um, okay, so I'm just going to put my viewfinder down because... It's no longer, and actually I'm just going to slide this under there. So that's can help me with a bit of the shadow. Okay, so now I can start kind of coloring in or shading. So again, I, I to to it, 
one of the things, if you're drawing in black and white, it's quite a complicated kind of process because, you know, what is, if everything is now gray, what is the, what is darker? Is it this green or is this kind of uh, flesh tone? Um, that is a, it's a hard thing to, d to determine, which is, is what, right? So there's, you can, what I do when I squint my eyes is it kind of helps me make some difference. And they're so close that I don't know if I can say that they're, which one would be darker than the other. So I'm just, for the sake of this drawing, going to make the green darker. So I'm just going to come over here, shade this in, make it a little bit darker. How are we doing for time? Two minutes. Okay. So by making the face and the skin tone a little bit darker, it forces me to darken everything else out. I know there's some people probably watching right now who didn't even shade the face at all. They've just left it the blank of the paper. But look, we've got white paper. This is this white. And even then, there's some shadow on it too. So... Um, Everything I see has some combination of gray in there. So doing these little tiny drawings on a piece of paper in your sketchbook, and with a timer too, I'm a firm believer in a timer to kind of keep you moving forward because this little timer forces me to to move on after like five minutes and not just sit here and obsess endlessly over trying to make this drawing perfect. I'm just like, okay, five minutes are up. Let's move on. Let's keep on going. Whether it's good or bad, we're going to start another drawing. And it just it, it helps short circuit the fussiness that can um, creep into anybody's um, uh, drawing uh, session. How am I doing with time here? 22 seconds. Oh, my goodness. I'm just going to kind of cheat this. You probably can't even see this on the screen, but this is actually kind of a gold stitching of some kind of waves. So technically, it would be white, but um, that would take me forever to, to draw in white, so I'm actually kind of cheated and made it the exact opposite so that I can see it a little bit better. So, just because... I, when, you're, when we're drawing, we often have to make changes to, that... Uh, for the sake of clarity that we wouldn't make, um, uh, you know, th that a photograph doesn't need to do. Okay, I think that's, that's pretty darn good for right now. I could keep on going, but again, that five minutes is up, and I, st I, I said <laughs> that I would want to try to short-circuit the fussiness, so I'm going to not fussy over my drawing. Okay, so... I'm going to move that out of the way so that I can't look at it and keep on working on it. So I've got three drawings here in 15 minutes, right? Ideally, you would continue doing this over and over and over again. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I used to do is I used to do this exact same exercise using a VHS player. And I would just take, you know, record David Letterman or some kind of... Uh, Twin Peaks or, you know, whatever show was on at the time, and I would, you know, have it recorded on the VHS player. Maybe some of the younger people don't even know what that is anymore, but <laughs> um, but the, this VHS player I used to have had like a, I think it was like a four-minute pause. So I could I could just randomly press pause, and it would pause the, the image on the screen, and then after four minutes, it would start playing again. And it was impossible to, to match back up to that original frame. And why I loved that is I would just press pause and I would have some, you know, 
uh, scene of a television show on the screen, and I'd have these little uh, squares drawn on my sketchbook, and I would have only four minutes to capture what I saw on the screen on the page. And there wasn't any, I, and I knew it was sort of like drawing a model in real life. Because after four minutes, they're getting up and they're moving. They can't hold the pose for any longer. So I loved that because there's just this urgency of like, okay, I gotta go fast. I, I can't, I can't, you know, kind of mess around and play with the eraser. I just have to go forward, right? So that I just really liked that energy because I just felt like I was. Um, I also feel like you develop faster when you have, when you there's a kind of that momentum going right okay so this we've got these i don't know if i have any pages left in some of them i've been using you know well you know i'm just for the sake of things i'm just going to show you uh i wasn't planning on it but since i'm right here these are just some sketches that i did for the renovations i'm building in the studio right now and this is, um, you can see I'm using like one point perspective for these sketches for shelves, right? To help determine what the, the scene is going to look like. All right, so here's another one. You know, I'm, I, I didn't draw a one point perspective and have everything receding to that point. I'm just sort of eyeballing it for, for me to kind of see how this is going to look, All right? So this is just, I want you to see perspective in action here how you can take this very kind of simple concept and apply it for something very very practical right you could draw your living room and then think about like how you would rearrange some furniture before you, you get up and start moving things so let me see if i have do i have any spare pages left in here um, nom, 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 nom. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see, this one of a hand I started. Let's see. Hmm. Well, oh, it, here's a. Oh, I, I got a couple right here at the. Oh, I left. This is what I often do at the beginning of a sketchbook. This is Robert Bateman, who's, you know, this is a licensed Robert Bateman sketchbook, and I uh, did a, I studied with him, so he signed my sketchbook. And I thought, this is a drawing I made. Him and I went sketching, and so here's some sketches I made with him. So I usually leave a few drop, empty pages at the beginning of a sketchbook, so that as I'm warmed up, I can draw a nice drawing at the beginning of the sketchbook so if somebody sees it, they don't see my first sloppy warm-up drawing, they see a nice drawing at the beginning. That's my little technique there. Because so <laughs> if you've ever walked around your sketchbook and people want to look at them, if they start at the beginning and they see some drawings, you're maybe less happy with They're like, oh, yeah, very good, yes, let's, uh, right? <laughs> so I kind of want to just, this is, that's my, my little tip for the day. Um, okay. So I'm going to do a drawing in my sketchbook here, and um, I am going to set up a very simple still life here. So I'm going to, I got a little tech that I'm going to, how am I going to organize this here? I am going to move a few things around, <clears throat> and I could have just put a, a, a photo up on the computer screen for us, but I thought it might be nice to actually show you how I would organize a still life, and then also we can have something, um, so what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of, you know, cheap poster board from the dollar store, this is like, what, 50 cents or something from the dollar, dollarama or, um, Looney Plus or whatever the dollar store is in your area. Um, and I'm just going to prop it up. I guess you can't really see what I'm doing here. Um, but I'm just kind of, I've, I've, how can I show you that? Um, well, you'll see in a second that I have a, the, the, this camera view book on the screen so um i am just 
putting some paper to kind of, it's, it's a, I've, how do I show that? Um, there's no way to do it. So I'm just going to, I've taken the, the, just so you can see if I was to do this at home, what I've done is I'm just taking the, the paper and kind of laying it so that it's kind of round like this, right? It's kind of like this shape. And I'm kind of putting it down and I put a few things in behind to kind of just keep it propped up a bit. You could tape it to a wall. This is just so I can get kind of a nice kind of clear backdrop. You could use this if you were going to take photographs of something and put it on eBay or this is actually how I did the thumbnail for today's episode. So I've got my paper there and let's now go to this other view. I thought I got it ready here. Um, no, I don't have it. So I'm gonna, let's make it here. Uh, this I will put up there. And then this here. Okay. So now you're seeing what this camera is seeing, right? My, cam my hand is now in front of this camera and I got this nice blank thing here. So now we could take, these are actually just plastic um, fruits and vegetables that I got from like the dollar store um, or where did I get? I think I got these from Michael's actually. Well, some of them from, I just kind of see these things around and then I, I buy them. I like this kind of stuff, just like Mirandi at the beginning who, you know, had all of those cups and, and bowls that, and he often, he would actually kind of paint them to give them a, a special kind of color or to get rid of some shine or, or he put a, a shiny paint on to get more shine, etc. So he, cause he would interchange all of those things. So this is, um, uh, I got this super high depth of field here. So just give me one second here. Brightening this whole thing up a little bit here. Okay, so I'm gonna now try to, I'm trying to <laughs> create some kind of a still life image for us to draw from. And um, it doesn't have to be too complicated. Let's say, do I even want a banana in here? Do I want this orange? Uh, if you use a one thing with a banana is you kind of want to be careful. Like if I put the, draw the banana, well, I was gonna say to try to avoid a situation like what I've just put on the screen. Um, just because drawing a banana like this, where it seems to be kind of coming towards us, uses a technique called foreshortening, and that's a little bit maybe more complicated than what we've done so far. So I'm actually gonna take the banana out. And so this looks like a pretty good composition. Now, the, the, there's no, there's, uh, it's not like what I've created here is any level of genius at all. This is just a, um, tilt this camera down. Um, it's just finding some organized, like you put them in whatever, I could just randomly throw them onto the table and see what they look like. And if I'm happy with that, I could draw that. Um, but if not, then if uh, you could spend a lot of time trying to kind of put it into the positions that you like. I think, you know, for our purpose right now, I'm pretty happy with that. So let me just now, I'm gonna get another view up here. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Trying to find a way to 
draw this. Okay. Maybe, let's try that again. Okay. Come on. Okay, so I've just arranged things around here and I got my sketchbook. I've turned my sketchbook into um, the landscape format. And now let's try to do this drawing. By using the paper that I have, um, I've gotten rid of the, the horizon line or the table. You you can use it if you want. You, you know I could r actually random randomly put one in there if I want. So let's just say to begin with, I'm going to draw a little frame on my picture on my sketchbook here, and I'm making this kind of horizontal kind of. Uh, Uh, or not, or, yeah, a uh, rectangle, kind of like my viewfinder. If you want to use your viewfinder, you could use use that. Now, the screen, using the, the computer screen, it already flattens the view for me, right? So if I if I was just drawing from life, then drawing from life is is way more complicated than drawing what you see on a television screen or computer screen uh, because things have already flattened um, on the screen. And there's a big difference between drawing what you see with your eyes in three dimensions versus what you see when you look at a television screen, right? Because we, we have, if you have, if you can see out of both of your eyes, then you have it's called binocular vision, right? You're seeing with two eyes, and then your brain takes that those two different uh, feeds, like video feeds, and then kind of stitches them together in your brain, right? So, you know, you, you can kind of see this if you close one eye back and forth. You can see sometimes things kind of move around, right? So... To, when we're drawing what we see with our eyes in real life, it's pretty complicated because we're seeing this three-dimensional world and then we're processing it in our brain and then we've got to flatten it onto the drawing. That's a really complicated thing to do. So it's no wonder a lot of people are terrified about doing this. So if you're drawing what you see on the screen right now, then you're already using the, the the television screen to kind of simplify things for you, right? So that's already um, a, a shortcut, right? Um, if we, when I'm doing this, when I teach this in, a, in class, I actually have, I have a bag of, uh, I'm not going to get it out because you can't even see, <laughs> but um, a bag full of these things. And I, I put a few of them on the table. So I, I would encourage you, if you have some fruit and vegetables, to go out and to uh, arrange them yourself. So anyway, if we were going to draw what, what what I see on my screen, um, then the first thing I'm going to do here is, is very quickly block in, and let's say we're at 518. So I'm going to set, well, you know what? I'm going to set a five minute timer starting right now, right? To get as much done as I can very quickly. So even though we're actually going to, going to draw for probably um, 10 or 15 minutes, I still want to get the basics on the page quickly. So, because sometimes people say, oh, well, now I've got 15 minutes, so I'm going to go real slow now, and I'm going to, um, you know, and, and then they end up spending, let's say, the whole time drawing one orange or apple. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of very quickly sketching out the shapes, right? I could even, if I wanted, I could go even more simple and just draw 
the uh, like draw circles on here. And you can, again, I'm drawing through this form. I just want to make sure everything is going to work. Um, and so this pair. Okay, and then I'm drawing these little stems really quickly. <laughs> I kind of like how this orange is kind of like the odd one out here. Cracks me up a bit. What is great about, uh, you know, the classical painting is is so, there was so much symbolism involved in that... Uh, in in art back then that everything had meaning so even just like a simple image like this of you know a couple of apples a pear and an orange you know there are there are meanings for what an orange means and an apple and so forth and uh you know this could be some allegory for you know uh, uh adam and eve being kicked out of the out of the garden of eden or i don't know you're right you know just <laughs> Um, and artists, you know, were kind of sly characters who, you know, would get a commission to, to do something and always try to find a way to kind of add their own little twist to it. Okay, so here we are. We're two and a half minutes into the, the drawing, and I've got the basics in play here. So now, before I do anything else, my goal is to, is to just evaluate this picture. Am I happy with this composition? Do I like where everything is and arranged on the page? Well, you know, I had decided that this was the edges of my frame, and you saw me kind of drawing and then erasing and moving the frame. Now, um, technically, now this orange is now very close to the edge, and then there's this big gap on this side here. So I could redraw everything and shift it over, or I could just, you know, expand the the boundary here. So I'm just going to, this is why I like drawing a little uh, frame on my pictures and I'm just going to keep on expanding it a bit. And this eraser, as you can tell, was dirty when I erased it. So, so you see, this is the problem here, the, the mess that it has made. But that's okay, because I can just disguise all of that when I start shading. Okay, so even at this point, I'm also going to now quickly lay in where my shadows are going to be. So here's one shadow. Here's another one in between. This right here appears to be, again, if I squint my eyes, this little shadow underneath this pear appears to be the darkest part of this entire drawing. So it's, it's just noticing those things and, and starting to kind of become aware of them is what's important. Okay, so I got my shadows on the table. Now, again, I'm going to squint my eyes and I got to make some decisions. Now, what is the darkest... If I'm now converting this into black and white, I could do this in color, but let's say I'm going to do a black and white drawing. What is the darkest, you know, um, fruit in this picture? Well, it, so there's my timer. So that's five minutes. So I'm going to set another five minutes, and we'll see where we are in five more minutes. So the darkest thing that I see is this, let's say in, in terms of, this is the darkest, this red apple, then the pear, then the green apple, and then the orange. All right, so I just have to keep that in mind as I go here. Now, there might be parts of either of them that are, are you know, so let's say there's the highlights on the apple. So I'm just going to make a couple little marks for myself. This is where some of the bright spots are going to be. Bright spots, bright spots. So this, I can kind of think about leaving some of these things um, 
I could also use my eraser later on. So I'm just kind of outlining where some of the darkest things are on this picture. And I've got a big kind of highlight up here because most of the light is kind of coming from this edge. Okay. So now I'm going to start kind of shading this picture in. So I'm going to I'm just going to use this blending method to again I'm using the side of my pencil. Look how far my my fingers are from the tip of the pencil, right? Like I'm holding it at the end here like this and I'm barely putting any pressure on it. Okay. Okay. So you see how dark this is. Now, that means if this is the lightest shape, everything else is going to get progressively darker. So I'm going to kind of go around and I'm going to sh I'm going to shade this one about the same level as of shading as this orange but just keeping in mind that it's going to go darker in some places. And then I'm going to do the pear. You can see I'm kind of avoiding that kind of bright spot. I'm, I'm also drawing those highlights a little bit. I hope so. this is showing up on the screen. I'm, I'm trying to draw kind of the fine line between going too dark so that my drawing kind of doesn't work and then dark enough so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So, let's, I'm gonna just start darkening this in, making the pear a little bit darker. So I like, the, my sort of philosophy when it comes to drawing is thinking about like, like, like uh, developing a, taking a Polaroid picture. You know how Polaroid Again, those of you that remember what Polaroids are, is if you've ever taken a Polaroid, you know, it develops, the whole image develops simultaneously, right? So it's not like if you take a picture of a person holding a dog, the dog's face develops completely, and then the person's face develops completely, and then the hands of the person, and then, you know, and then the last thing is the background. Everything is kind of coming being developed at the same time so that's the way that i draw is i want i want there to be if if something happens and i gotta walk away from the drawing you know midway through i want it to be reasonably complete that um it could kind of try to stand on its own that rather than being like something really well finished and then the rest unfinished okay so now i've got these basic things in here. Now I'm going to add some of my shadows. So doing drawing like still lifes, you know, is um, what's great about it is you can you can find something simple whether it's like. There's another five minutes, so let's let's do five more, and then I think we'll call it a day. So this will be a 15-minute drawing. Um, is it you can you can draw these kind of humble things in your house, and and you can document uh, you can document them in your sketchbook. They don't have to be. I, I know I keep I'm repeating myself, but the so many people, and I'm guilty of this myself, to be honest, sometimes, is I, I'll carry around my sketchbook and I'm just sort of, I'm, I'm looking for that perfect thing that's going to make the best drawing ever. 
and then I end up, you know, walking around, and then I'm like, ah, you know what, I'm gonna need it. I'm a little hungry, so let's go get a hamburger, or, uh, and then, oh, you know what, well, you know, I'm looking here at the movie times, let's go see a movie, and by the end, and then it's like, this whole, my plan to go out and make a bunch of drawings, and I've got nothing accomplished, because um, I was waiting for this lightning bolt of inspiration to hit. Okay. So, I'm just now kind of going over some of the shadow and darkening that. So you see now I'm kind of holding the pencil differently again, and this allows me to, to press down with that finger to get a little bit darker, because I am darkening things now. The previous pass, that first pass that I was doing over um, this drawing was, you know, relatively light. I was just kind of wanting to get everything into, on the page. And now I'm kind of refining things. So I'm just looking for all of the, the darkest parts. And now I'm going to come in and just start really getting darker. Now that I'm kind of pretty satisfied with where everything is on the page, I like where my shadows are. And this, by the way, is, is a 2B pencil, so I can get a little bit darker. How are we doing for time? We've got two and a half minutes here. So let's see how much we can get done here. So as I said, today is the kind of the, the end of this first group of classes. Next week, next Tuesday, I'm just going to continue going forward. So it'll basically be like as if nothing has kind of changed. We'll um, uh, just keep on exploring and learning new things. But uh, the next group of classes are on portrait drawing, so drawing people's faces, including drawing your own. We're gonna, I'm going to show you how to draw self-portraits, which is often kind of intimidating for people, but I, I've i taught um, I've taught little children, like kindergarten kids, how to do it. I'm sure if you're watching this right now, I know for a fact that you can do it. So um, we're going to do that. How am I doing for time? I've got a minute left. Okay, I might... Well, we'll see. I, I'm probably going to need just a little bit more time. Um, So I, you know, I love drawing from life. Like this is kind of my favorite thing to do. So, you know, I think my my results, my personally are stronger than some of the like even the results I did for yes or was it Tuesday's class with the uh, the grid. You know, that's something I can do, but I'm not as satisfied with those results. But as I said, there are there are plenty of artists who have made their whole careers using that method and, and swear by it. So, you know, like anything that I'm teaching you or that you see, I'm going to, let's just repeat this. We're going to make a 20 minute drawing. I'm, I'm kind of having fun. I don't even know if my, my screensaver's on. I don't even know if anybody's watching or this whole thing is, um, the internet's down. Who knows? I'm just going to keep on going here. Um, because once this ends, I gotta start doing more building again. And, whew, it's a lot of work. Getting all hot and sweaty, and it's a nice hot day out there today. So I've, I think I've burnt my ears and my and my neck cutting wood in the hot sun. 
So I'm kind of happy to, <laughs> to draw as a way of procrastinating, let alone, you know, so. And I think this feels like so satisfying to, you know, start to get an image that just sort of like appears like a Polaroid slowly on the page. So you see how now I'm kind of going over even just little things I still want to do on all of these um, each, you know, I still want to go back to the to the orange and add a little bit more to it. But um, before I do that, I'm making sure that other parts of my drawing are are finished, or are, are not finished, but they're that I've begun them at, at, at the very least, so that they're not, so that I don't just, you know, finish the the orange and then go to the pear and then like I'm trying to give attention equally you know it's like all the boats rise simultaneously the image develops you know at uh, at the same kind of speed so the other thing too with these highlights is they're not all purely white right sometimes these the highlights are they're they're um they're lighter parts of of uh, that fruit, but it's not white entirely. And you know, as I do this, I I'll also, you know, honestly, the drawing starts to take on a life of its own. Right, and that's I think the most exciting thing is, kind of around this point, I, I stop looking. Well, I, I'm still looking at the original, but maybe not as like, as intently or with the same amount of focus, as I began my drawing. Right, and I kind of I'm referring to it, and I kind of look for certain things, but you know to match some details. But at some point. You know, I could move this away and, and knock all of the fruit out of the way, and then I'm just dealing with my my drawing here. Now, I told you I had these, you know, the, this background as I was playing with my frame. So you know what? I'm going to try to include it a little bit into this. So I'm just kind of darkening. I want to. You know, give some love to the background, to this so-called negative space that we call, as we say. So it's not just purely white. Well, that didn't work out so well, did it? Oh, well. Maybe in order to make that work, what I'm going to do, well, let's see, let's do a little experiment here. I'm going to draw like as if this was a uh, pattern. I don't know, we'll see if this, I'm committed to it already, so. So this is, you know, it's, you know, the Tim Gunn on uh, Project Runway, always like, make it, make it work, make it work. Right? So there we go, yeah, there we go. And it's, so, you know, I, I took this part of the drawing that was a problem, part of it that I was unhappy with, and then I've kind of tried to incorporate it into my drawing. Okay, so... I think I'm going to call it here. So as we're getting close to finish, um, obviously, if you're interested in continuing, feel free or I would strongly encourage you to uh, subscribe to the channel so you get an update of when the next video is being posted. 
You can also um, go over to my Facebook, and the link is in the description, and you can like my Facebook page, and because we'll create a, a separate new event for the next set of classes. So if you want to make sure that you are notified on there, go to the, the Facebook. Um, and if you're if you want to contribute some small amount to um, to keep the lights on down here. Um, you can leave a donation through PayPal. The link is also down, down downstairs, down below in the, the, uh, the video description. Um, and then you know what? Okay, just one last thing here. Just to kind of give a little bit of texture to this orange, I'm just gonna add some little, little spots. Oh, it looks like I just ran out of power on that, so it looks like the uh, <laughs> we're um, so if you weren't finished your drawing, the 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 battery of the camera was like tough luck, and probably this one here is gonna is gonna die here shortly as well, so. Um, and so what I'm doing here, just adding a couple of these little little spots randomly on this orange, just to kind of create some difference in, in texture between these apples. Uh, because the apples and the pear, in fact, the pear needs a little some dots on here too. Not, I don't want to put too many. But um, it just, just to kind of create a difference in the texture now, technically, on the orange, rather than black little dots like I just put, they were little white areas, right? The light was kind of hitting them and making... But it would have been really difficult if I had tried to kind of color all around all that white. If I had white pencil, I could go and add little white dots to it, but I think that's good. I think... Oh, and I, that is... Oh, oh, shoot! This whole time I was doing this and you couldn't even see what I'm doing. There you go. Okay, so you could see, so unlike the the photograph, this would have been little white spots, but I've decided to do them as black. So again, I have to kind of use my, be a little bit creative as I do this to make that work. Okay, so um, logging in here. I'm not sure if there's any Comments. Um, making sure we got everything is still okay. Oh, no new comments. Okay, so I also I think actually now that I think about it, I think someone sent some pictures the other day. Am I able to find that? Um, I think it was an Instagram, wasn't it? Oh, you know what? I may have put it on the desktop here. Yeah, I just want to quickly talk about Heidi's drawing that she sent. Um, and so let's get this view. Ah. Okay, so... Just gonna drag this image here. This is a drawing that Heidi sent in, and um, I thought I'd just kind of quickly talk about it before we're done for the the day and the the week, I guess. So th this is an image that Heidi did of looks like some uh, very cool owls, <laughs> and this is a very kind of a playful image. Um, I like. You know, right off the top, I, I love these little 
kind of holes that are on the front here. And I like the way that you've got their dark and then we see these kind of cutouts. So this is shows us how kind of thick this material is. So if this was a like a carved out of a coconut, we'd see kind of the, the it looks hollow inside, just that simple little detail that you've added. I like these, uh, this kind of, you know, um, pattern on on this owl here it looks kind of like a, a, a stuffed animal or um, and one thing I would just maybe have tried to wrap some of these lines around the edge so just to give it a little bit more volume yeah, it looks like you've done a little bit of it but I would even exaggerate it a little bit more because right now it looks like it's flattened out a tiny bit um, and then otherwise you know this looks fantastic I, I I love how you allowed yourself to go nice and dark with this image, right? Like you can see you went really dark. And that contrast is such an important part of drawing. And so many people don't allow themselves to go that dark out of fear and it really flattens the drawing. So, or it, and there can be uses for it, um, but it just, it makes it look, if we don't go very dark, it looks like there's a lot of atmosphere in your drawing and like things are really hazy, right? So if that's the look you're going for, then use that technique by all means, but I think this turned out really well. Um, I, I'm not sure what all of this is here on the side. I don't know if this is just some doodling or an earring or some kind of the feathers for another owl. So I'm not sure what relationship it has to the other things, but it doesn't necessarily need to. Um, this could have been just like a sketch that you began and then you decided to, instead of just leaving it a white background, decide to fill it up with even more owls, which I am in favor of. I, I love, uh, I love that kind of taking the idea and then con continuing to expand. Um, so, uh, I don't, do I have any feedback on it? Uh, I think it looks great. I like there's the nice kind of volume around those forms. I would maybe add a, even more shading to some of these, curve those lines a little bit more, but otherwise, even up here, we can see the layering of these different kinds of, um, I don't know, feathers or coins or whatever they are, but they they appear to be on one on top of the other by using the shadow that effectively. So, um... I think that's, uh, I don't know if there's anything else I, I can say about it, but I think it looks great. I, I, I've, I really appreciate all the drawings that you sent in, Heidi. I think they're, they're great. And I really appreciate you, you uh, interacting in this way. Because I think regardless of the quality of, of your artwork, and I'm talking to everybody, you know, showing them to people and getting people's feedback on them, especially from somebody like myself who teaches i can kind of help people get better and i think even if those of you that haven't sent me any drawings can learn a little bit about even just the way that i give feedback on other people's artwork yeah so amy says it looks like something from a children's book that's great yeah it does i and i for sure think you could take anything you draw and develop it into a book or a character or a cartoon a zine um some of which we're going to explore starting next Tuesday. So uh, if you want to uh, participate, please uh, like, subscribe, like the Facebook page so you get the notifications of when it begins. It'll be the same time, same place, 4 o'clock on Tuesday, 4 o'clock on Thursday, Pacific time, Vancouver time. Um, and uh, if you're really appreciating th this, your support f f with a PayPal donation would be greatly appreciated. But if you don't want to contribute any money and you don't have to, uh, what would be even better would be to spread the word and to share these videos on your own Facebook or Twitter, Instagram, or take photographs so that you can, sh if you're enjoying this and you're getting something out of it, wouldn't it be great if other people, your friends or family, parents, daughters, you know, et cetera, were, are also participating, right? So if you said, if you th thought this whole last uh, month and a half of, of, hanging out with me on your Tuesday and Thursday afternoons was valuable, then you could post a link to the playlist for all these videos and say, hey, I just did this whole course with this guy for free. 
You can too. It's all up on YouTube. Watch it whenever you want. That would be fantastic. I would really appreciate that. And that would be uh, as meaningful to me as, as, a, as a financial donation too. So whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, well, so that, that takes us to the end here. I really appreciate everybody sticking around. Um, I, I encourage you, if this is the end of the train uh, for you, to continue working, continue drawing. Uh, don't just stop here. And um, you can apply everything we've done towards making paintings, making sculptures, even like just writing things on the on the board, a dry erase board at work. You know, if there's a meeting and you're able to get up and kind of do a quick illustration of what the setup for the next event is going to look like or how you plan on rearranging the display in the windows at your store. You know, if you can describe it through a drawing, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words, it's, it's worth far more than that, right? Um, so, uh, the road, the creative road, isn't always going to be smooth. There's going to be some ups and downs. I like to use the the analogy of a roller coaster. That it's up and down, and up and down, and up and down. And just when you think everything's going fantastic, boom, it drops off, right? And then you're like, ah, and then, as then it, if you keep on going and you don't give up, eventually it levels out and it starts climbing again and you start kind of getting back into the groove and it feels good again. So you just have to keep holding on, keep working. If you're not happy, just, just turn the page, start again, take a break. You know, there's times where I, I don't draw for weeks on, on end and then I come back, it takes me a little bit of like maybe a couple hours to get back into the, into the swing of things and then I'm off and running again. So, um, I don't know. I could talk forever and I'm going to continue teaching <laughs> in the future. So I don't think I'll just leave it there. I really appreciate uh, everybody's support over the last little while. Um, next week, you'll see the, the new studio in behind me. Until then, my friends, enjoy the rest of your afternoon or your morning or your evening, wherever you are on this fine planet. We will see you on Tuesday. And... Oops... Um, take care you guys